If your Facebook account was just recently banned, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a new Facebook account properly. What's up everyone, my name's John and welcome to The Creed. If you're new to the channel, I build online businesses and I help people just like you escape that nine to five prison by building an online business. So if your entire Facebook account has been banned, there's certain steps that you need to take to ensure you can create a new account without getting that one banned right away. If you want to grow your dropshipping business, start right now by liking this video and subscribe. Also, if you like the video and comment welcome to the creed, you're going to be entered to win a free consultation call with me. I've seasoned over 14 different Facebook accounts and none of them have been banned after I've taken them through the entire seasoning process. What you want to do is you want to choose a name that's relatively similar to your name or the exact same as your name. This way in the future, if you ever have to hop on a Facebook call, they will still refer to you by your name so it won't be confusing when they refer to you by a different name. So we'll do John and then we'll do the last name as Lumore. And then when you set the birth date, you wanna make sure that it's a birth date that you're gonna remember. You will also be creating a sheet with all of this information to ensure that you never forget it, but it's best to just keep things as simple as possible. So we'll do January 1st, 2000. When it comes to setting up an account, the best way to make sure that it's seasoned properly is keeping as much information on the account as possible. Make it look as real as possible. So we're gonna select male because it's John. If it's a female name, make sure that it's a female and then we'll hit sign up. After continuing, you're gonna receive an email and this email will direct you to confirm your email address and then you'll get taken to this page where you're gonna begin the account setup. So when it comes to the account, the first things we wanna do is set up the entire profile and add as much information as possible because an account that's real will have way more information. So what we'll do is we'll start off by adding a Facebook profile picture and a cover photo. When it comes to the profile picture, the main thing to keep in mind is you want it to be a profile picture of a person that's not too close to the camera. We want the face to not be recognizable as much as possible because in the event down the line you do have to deal with Facebook sending you an email requesting photo verification, you want to ensure that they can't use face recognition software on your profile picture. So after doing a little bit of digging, and I'm talking literally 10 to 15 minutes of digging, this is what I was able to find. So this is what I'm talking about when I say a profile picture of someone that's relatively far away. So this one would be great. We wouldn't want to include the cat that this person's walking because that might be a great identifier for finding this photo on Google. So what we would do is probably just a profile picture of this section right here. As you can see, the person's face isn't super clear. It's relatively far away, so it will be a great profile picture. Then, in the event Facebook does send us their initial email thinking that our account might not be real, requesting a selfie photo, then at that point, I would send them this photo. So as you can see, when you look at these two different people, they look relatively similar. Their nose structure is similar. Their haircuts are relatively similar. They have the same beard, same kind of facial structure. So this would really work very well for in the event Facebook does request a photo of a selfie. When it comes to a Facebook profile, there's certain verification processes that Facebook will take you through if they think your account's not real. Ideally, we want them to never have to request any type of verification, and I've had that happen with the majority of the seasoned accounts I've done this with. In the event they do request verification, stage one would be them requesting this selfie photo. Stage two would be them requesting your birth date and confirmation of your email, and then stage Stage three would be them requesting photo ID. If the account gets to a point of them requesting photo ID, this is an account you're gonna have to let go because of course you don't have the photo ID. But that's why we're gonna go through all of these different steps here that I'm gonna go over to ensure you don't ever have to receive that email requesting photo ID. So now that we've got a profile picture and a selfie photo, we're gonna add these to the file of this Facebook account because we wanna make sure we have all this information in a document because when Facebook does go through and restrict your account requesting verification, you cannot log in. So you cannot access these photos, so you wanna make sure that you have them inside a document outside of Facebook. The next stage is creating this person's persona. So you wanna make sure that all of the data and information to do with this person's persona matches up. So what I'm doing is I'm making this person, John Lumore, he's gonna be like a middle-aged guy that likes the outdoors, likes hiking, and likes pets. So when I do the cover image, I'm gonna do this hiking image. We've got him right there, which is great. And then we're gonna start adding more information to the profile to make it look as real as possible. 
So we would wanna include the bio here, which is I like hiking and outdoors, trying to keep myself and my pets active, which is congruent with the theme that he's an outdoor type of guy, likes hiking, likes his pets, that kind of thing. Then we would wanna include as much information on this section as we possibly can. So adding the university, adding a high school, adding the place where you live, adding the place where you're from, adding a relationship status, um, adding all these different things, including your details, like what you like to do. So walking and extreme outdoor sports, those are the hobbies. And then once you have all that information, you wanna make sure that you publish as many of these things as posts on your profile, because we wanna start getting some activity on the profile. So as you can see, we start posting different stuff and this will give some activity. Then what we wanna do is we wanna start adding different things to do with stuff that he's interested in. So if we go to the about section, you're gonna see that there's this entire little section down here for sports, music, movies, TV shows, books, likes, and all these different things. So what we want to do is we want to go start liking some stuff and interacting with different groups and different pages because this is something that typically a regular profile would do. So when we go through and we look up books, TV shows, movies, all these different things, we would then want to sort by pages. And when you're going through and you're looking for these different pages, you want to like certain pages, not too many from the start though. This is a seasoning process. And typically what you want to do is try to find books, movies, TV shows, all these kind of things that would line up with the profile of this person. And then we would also try to find those kind of groups. So what we would want to do is a hiking outdoor group. We would try to find some of those. And we're going to just join a couple, not an excessive amount, but just a couple to show that we are actively interested in these different groups. And we are definitely someone that likes hiking and we're actively a part of the community in this area. When it comes to adding people as friends, a major thing is ensuring you aren't adding an excessive amount of people super fast. This is a a big red flag. A typical account won't go through and add just a ton of people. Liking a ton of pages, liking a bunch of music, books, and all these different things, that is kind of normal activity because people are adding information to their profile. But when it comes to adding friends, this is something that you want to do slowly. So I would recommend doing maybe 20 to 30 friends per day and just gradually doing that till you get to like maybe 400 and 500 friends. And that's a reasonable amount, right? That's a realistic amount. So the best way to find friends that will actually accept your friend request and add you right away so they aren't private or anything like that, and they will actually accept your friend request because someone that doesn't know you won't accept it. They'll kind of think you're weird and that could again throw up a red flag. So what you want to do is you want to go through and search different stuff to do with countries that have these accounts that will follow just anyone. And these countries will typically be India, Vietnam, and the Philippines. So we would want to go try to find some stuff to do with those areas. So what you can do is you can go through and you can find a profile of someone that lives in this other country that will accept your friend request. And then you can go through and look at their friends and add all of their friends too. So the best way to do this is you just constantly find different people in different pockets and you can go through and you can look at their friends and look at all of their different photos, see the people commenting on their photos and then add those people as friends too. Again, you wanna make sure that you don't do this too frequently. A reasonable amount is a good amount. You don't wanna go through and add just an excessive amount of people right off the bat. So now that we got the Facebook profile set up with the Facebook profile image, the backup selfie image, the cover photo, all of the data from the back end that links to this person's persona, we wanna also ensure that we're gradually uploading some photos. So again, keeping congruency is very important. So the best way to show action and interaction of your profile is uploading photos or uploading interactive comments on different posts that are already active on Facebook and then also going into different groups and commenting different stuff. Don't spam these groups and don't comment a bunch of random stuff. Comment stuff that's relevant. Again, it comes down to your metadata for your entire Facebook account indicating that you are a real person, you are doing real interaction. So what you would wanna do, since this is a hiking account, this is a person that likes hiking, is you would wanna go through and you would wanna do like hiking and outdoors. Once your request to join the group has been approved, this is where you wanna do a large amount of your interaction to show that your Facebook account is actually real. I've cross-tested this with so many different Facebook accounts, and this is the best place to interact because it's a group community activity. So if you make a comment and 
someone replies to your comment and then you reply to that comment again, that's something that's very real. A bot couldn't do that. So it makes your account look very real. You can go through and you can comment on something that someone else commented to get that interaction right away instead of making your own. You could say like, looks like a winter wonderland. And then hopefully this person right here, Shabnab, will actually comment back and reply to my comment and I'll get some type of an interaction going, making my account look a lot more real. These type of interactions are very important in seasoning your account and ensuring it seems like a real account. As you go along, you want to periodically do these type of activities and the seasoning process, I recommend you let it run for anywhere from three to six weeks to ensure your entire account is seasoned properly. After seasoning an account, of course, there won't be many issues when you initially do that. Getting the account, not a huge issue. You've now got it. The issues start coming up when you start trying to run ads. So whenever you create a new Facebook account like this, not only do you need to go through and season the account and make the account look real through different interaction, what you also need to do is you need to go through and ensure your Facebook business manager looks real and is accurate through interaction. So the best way of doing this is creating your own page and starting a page likes campaign. Creating a Facebook page, maybe around your cat or around your pets. As you can see, this person right here, John Lumore, has a pet named Muffins. So maybe I would go through and create a Facebook page all around muffins and pets and cat care. And then with that page, I would run a page likes campaign because those are low risk campaigns to Facebook. And with that, you can build up your page, season your page, and at the same time, season your Facebook account. And as you take an account through this process, the main thing that you want to ensure you do is social interaction through Facebook pages, but also going through and actively posting on your Facebook account like I did here, ensuring there's some organic posts on your account, ensuring you're interacting with people in the groups, making it look like you're a real account and not a bot. That is the main focus of this entire process. Then once you get to the Facebook page seasoning, using the page likes campaign will double down because you're gonna season a Facebook page and you're gonna season an ad account. And then as you go through that step, you should be able to go through and eventually transition into conversion campaigns and purchase campaigns. Probably about 60% of the time, you'll be able to go through this entire process and not have to do any type of verification. Then there's the next percent that's gonna require you to send them this selfie photo that we recently found. And then at that point, your Facebook account will be fine. Then there's the next verification process, which will be your birth date and any other information on the back end, which is why you want to keep all this information in a file on your computer. And then of course, the final one is having to deal with photo ID verification. And that one, there is no way around that one. You just have to let go of the account and try creating a new one. If you're dealing with a Facebook account ban and you're having to go through this process, chances are you're also dealing with PayPal account issues too. So if you click this video right here, it's gonna show you how I go through and I ensure my PayPal accounts never deal with holds, limits, or restrictions when it comes to all my PayPal processing. If you liked the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button.